Hey, what's happening, everybody? Sports Live in the ATL. David here. As you can see, I'm repping the Calgary Flames hat, the old retro Atlanta Hawks warm-up jacket. Uh, Saturday night, I think it's around like 11.30 Eastern time or something. As you can see, I still got the holiday spirit. I still got the lights going on in the house uh, because to me, it's holiday until January 1st. You know, New Year's Eve and all that stuff has fireworks and lights. So I'm just keeping the theme going. But I want to do this video. Uh, I was, uh, you know, I was gonna do the Raiders game tonight, but you know, couldn't end up on network because not on my TV, and I wasn't gonna do it on my laptop. And I wanted to just chill out and relax and have some fun tonight. So, but get ready for the game Sunday: Falcons and Chiefs. <laughs> Could get brutal. Anyways, this is uh, Road to 3K. Please click the subscribe button, the red button below. Click the notification bell so you'll know when the content comes out. Uh, please hit the like button. And to the haters, click the dislikes. I see it coming. And as always, share to your media outlets. Uh, I might make this a premiere. I'm not sure. But what I want to talk about tonight is the Atlanta Hawks. As you know, I broadcasted and streamyarded uh, the game against the Chicago Bulls uh, the other night. And then uh, tonight I wasn't able to do the game. The Hawks played the Memphis Grizzlies. We all know that the Atlanta Hawks have not been good for a couple years. Um, the Atlanta Hawks have had a lot of good teams throughout the years. Uh, I started following them when they had this right here. This was the logo back in the 80s with Dominique Wilkins, Spud Webb, Tree Rollins, John Battle, Glenn Doc Rivers, John Conkak, uh, Cliff Levingston, um, Reggie Theus, you name it. And then all into the 90s with Mookie Blaylock and Steve Smith, Kimmy Mutombo. And then in the 2000s, you know, when we had some good players and started getting, uh, what's it, Paul Millsap, Kyle Korver. Um, uh, Jeff Teague, Al Horford, etc. And then we had a little bit of downtime once, you know, Mike Woodson left and then Mike Boldenhoser left. And we were under the last couple of years of rebuilding. And then Lloyd Pierce comes in a couple of years ago from the 76ers. And everybody knows what he did with the Sixers, uh, built that team, uh, rebuilding. And, you know, now they're a, a pretty good team, contending team uh, in some years. Um, and then we got the Travis uh, Slink, the general manager from the Golden State Warriors. And I knew it. I already knew what he was going to do. Travis Slink was probably salivating at the lips going. And we got one of the top scorers, point guards in the back in, in the NBA, and, uh, Trey Young. And uh, there's a lot of talk about Trey Young or Don Titch, whatever his name is, from Dallas, who was better. Clearly, uh, the guy from Dallas, uh, Don Titch, whatever his name is, had a better overall year than Trey Young. But Trey Young has never had a team to be able to go to the playoffs. And, you know, last year, obviously, you know, 20, what's it, 20 and 47 or whatever it was, we were competitive in a lot of games. But all we had was Trey Young, Kevin Herter, and John Collins, pretty much. And everybody else we had was kind of castaways and all that. You know, guys that, you know, I don't think that they, they fit their roles. They weren't ready. But we all knew what Trey Young was capable of doing. We saw that, and we saw what John Collins was doing. And to me, Kevin Herter, to me, reminds me of, and I said it last year, of a Kyle Korver. You know, a guy who, you know, who can handle the ball a little bit. I, don't, I think his defense might be a little bit better than Kyle Korver's was, but he can stroke the three. And, um, you know, John Collins got uh, suspended after a couple games last year. Uh, for drug use, and you know everybody's talking about. Oh, John Collins needs to get the max contract. Why? He hasn't done anything. He hasn't. He hasn't done anything deserving of a max contract. You. One thing I hate about sports is that these teams are overpaying players. Look at the Falcons overpaying all these damn players. Play the year that they decline the option. Play the year and then get your money because it's about winning. And then what Travis Slank did was gone out because we knew it. We knew uh, last year that uh, this year the Hawks were going to have some of the some of the top options in free agents because they had a lot of salary uh, cap room, a lot of money to spend. And they did it. Went out and got uh, Rajon Rondo, Danilo Gallinari, Bog, uh, Bogo Bogdanovich, uh, what's his name, Tony Snell for Detroit Pistons, uh, Solomon Hill from the Miami Heat. Um, who else did they get? Um, why do I feel like I'm missing somebody? I feel like I'm missing somebody. But the Hawks, oh, they got Clint Capella, obviously, last year for Houston, but didn't play for injury. And he pulled this hamstring. He's like a big dude, drink of water. He was expected to play uh, today, and he didn't play for the second straight game. But I saw him on the sidelines, and I saw he was moving, so hopefully he'll be, he'll be ready to go. But the Atlanta Hawks clearly are, in my opinion, uh, 
the Golden State Warriors of the uh, Eastern Conference. They got shooters. Uh, I saw the preseason games, a couple against the Magic, one's against the Grizzlies. And then the first two games this year, the Hawks are 2-0. The Hawks went to Chicago the other night, opening night for them, and they were up by 40 points at one time and then rested the starters and wound up uh, some of the starters came in to finish it. We won by 20. Today, uh, I was working most of the day, so I didn't get a chance to watch, but the Memphis Grizzlies are not a bad team, and they have the Hawks' number. And being for the fact we played them twice in the preseason, they blew us out in one game and was blowing us out in the second game, and then we came back and won by one. I knew this game was going to be tough, but I got back in time for the fourth quarter. It was going back and forth. The Hawks showed a lot of guts. The Hawks showed no quit. And the Hawks have shown, if they haven't shown anything by these two games, is that this is a totally different team. Uh, I know last year the Hawks started off 2-0 also, but they didn't play the best competition. But also they they only had, you know, when John Collins got hurt, I think the Hawks were 2-2 two two at the time. So, But you can throw anything at the Hawks. It's like what I love about this team right now is not only playing with confidence, but you can – there's not one night that you can expect a particular starting lineup. You already know Trey Young is going to start most games. There might be a few games where Rajon Rondo, you know, gets a start, a spot start here and there. You can put Gallinari in there, Bogdanovich, uh, Capella when he, when he finally is able to play, Tony Snell, Trey Young, John Collins, Fernando, um, Cam Reddish, DeAndre Hunter, Kevin Herter. I mean, even this guy, what was his name, Nathan something tonight, was popping threes all over the place. I mean, this Atlanta Hawks team, unlike the teams in the past, because I remember when we had uh, ISO Joe, it was pretty much Joe Johnson and Al Horford. And then when uh, Kyle Korver was here, we made that run in 2014 where we had a 60-win season, 19 games in a row. Um, It was, you know, Kyle Korver, Paul Millsap, Al Horford, Jeff Teague, whatever. But... Once the benches come in, it was kind of, you know, suspect. I mean, I remember the rebuilding years when we had Josh Childress, Josh Smith, to name a few. And then these guys blossomed, except for Childress. He bolted overseas. But the last couple years as a Hawks fan have not been good. But since Trey Young got drafted, we knew things were coming in the right direction. We just had to bite our lip. And all of a sudden, there's bandwagon Hawks fans all over the place. I have never seen so many Hawks jerseys and Hawks hats or whatever. And I've been on here doing Hawks games throughout the years. Okay, so, you know, like I said, I'm one of the loyalists. You know, I call myself the best Atlanta sports video content creator on YouTube because I am. I'm real. I'm loyal as hell. And I know so much about not only the teams now, but the history. A lot of the people who are doing... uh. Braves videos, Atlanta sports videos, Falcons, whatever, Hawks only know the now in the last 5, 10 years. I can give you information on the Hawks, Braves, Falcons way back when, in the 80s, in the 90s. That's how I call myself and why I call myself the best Atlanta sports content creator on YouTube. So, with the fact that the Hawks are 2-0, it's a 75-game season as opposed to, what, 81 or whatever it is, I know there's going to be nights where the Hawks are off, but I firmly believe the Hawks are clearly capable in a 75-win season to win 50 games. 55 games. Call me a stretch. Say I'm overstepping it a little bit, but if you haven't seen what I've seen in these last two games, uh, there's a lot of upside for this team. Uh, Look, let's just say, and I said this last year when John Collins got hurt, even if we just still had just Trey Young, John Collins, and Kevin Herter, we would be an 8th seed no matter what. But with all the acquisitions that we have picked up, seriously, the Atlanta Hawks, and some people laughed at me, (laughs) I think the Hawks can be a three seed. I really do. You know, the team seems to be meshing, although we're going to have letdowns. The home opener is Monday against the Detroit Pistons. That wouldn't surprise me to see a letdown. It really would not. Because you go on the road with two dominant wins, um, and also think about it, the two teams that we beat, Chicago Bulls uh, and the Memphis Grizzlies, we were 0-5 against last year. We were 0-3 against the Bulls. I talked about that during the pregame against the Bulls the other night, uh, and all three games were blowouts. And then we lost both games to the Memphis Grizzlies last year. 
So we've already bettered that right there. So I'm looking forward to to, to next week. Uh, I will not be able to, the next game I'll be able to stream will be Saturday. I think that's against the Cleveland Cavaliers at home. The Hawks are playing the Pistons on Monday in our home opener. Uh, from what I know, fans might be coming back at some point, and I hope to be there because I remember all the Hawks games that I went to in 2014 and 2015. I was behind the Fox Sports South uh, post game show, and I met Mike Glenn and I met Jerome Jurenovich. I had a blast. And I had some people who recognized me from YouTube and said, Hey, aren't you Sports Live in the ATL? I said, Yeah. So, uh, to be able to get back to the games will be nice. Um, obviously, social distance and all that kind of stuff. But we got the Detroit Pistons Monday night. And then a weird part of the schedule. On Wednesday and Friday, the Hawks are at Brooklyn against the Brooklyn Nets. And I know the Brooklyn Nets have improved themselves a lot, too. Um, so, I'm looking forward to, to what we've got. I have not been an NBA fan. I'll put it like this. When, the, when it was always Golden State versus Cleveland, I think the Golden State Warriors and Cleveland Cavaliers met in four straight NBA Finals or five, I don't know, whatever it was. I didn't watch the NBA. The only team I watched were the Atlanta Hawks. And we haven't been to the playoffs in a while. So I don't know if it's three or four years. I'm not quite sure. But uh, I know it's been at least three years since we made the playoffs. so Or two years for that matter. But I, I saw a lot of the upswing uh, when Trey Young was drafted. And I saw a lot of the games last year. We played. A, I mean, even though last year a lot of the games were horrible defensively. I mean, I mean, out of all 20 wins, we had to outscore a lot of teams. There was one game against Washington. I think we won like 153 to 146 or something. Uh, defense clearly has been a focus. We got a lot of players who play good defense against the Bulls in the opening night. We won 124 to 104, and then today against Memphis. We won 122 to 112. So, I mean, you're giving up over 100 points. But in this league, giving up 100 points is the normal. It's not abnormal to give up 100 points nowadays in, in the last 10 years or so in the NBA. But when I started watching the NBA in the 80s, whenever you got 100 points, that was something. You know, back in the 80s and early 90s. But right now, these teams are so young and athletic, got a lot of scores. You know, 100 points is nothing to these guys. I mean, shoot, the Hawks had 83 points at half against the Bulls. But like I said, I can't analyze this game too much. I do know the uh, Memphis Grizzlies got off to a 16-8 to start lead, and then the Hawks made a run. I think we at one point we were up 33-25. That's when I had to go back and do what I was doing. I was working, and then when I got off, it was like, I think it was like a four-point Hawk lead. Listen to it on the radio, um, and then I watched the fourth, the, like maybe the last six minutes when I got home. And I was impressed with their poise. I was impressed with how Trey Young has taken over the team. He's got a lot of swag. You know, he's got a lot, a lot of shimmy. You know, I think he needs to do something with that hairdo. The hairdo looks like he put his finger in a socket and just sprouted up fire. But um, overall, I'm really excited about, about this Hawks team. Uh, for those who have followed me all these years on YouTube, to me, championships are the only thing I want. In football, I want a Super Bowl. College football, I won a national title. In baseball, I won a World Series. In the MLS, I won a uh, MLS Cup. In hockey, I won a Stanley Cup. In the Canadian Football League, I won a Grey Cup championship. It's how it is. I won a major championship. I'm tired of second place. But the Atlanta Hawks this year, they're going to get a pass. Now, do I, do I expect the Atlanta Hawks to make the playoffs? Absolutely. Do I believe the Hawks can make some noise in the playoffs? Absolutely. Now, just because... I understand that the Hawks will probably not win the NBA title this year. That doesn't mean when the Hawks start the playoffs that I'm not going to want them to win the title. You know, you get to the playoffs, you want to win the championship. But I'm going to give them a pass this year. Even though they'll probably lose in the playoffs, I hope they hold themselves well. I hope they win a couple rounds. Maybe, maybe make the Eastern Finals. Semifinals. Something. Even though I'll be upset, I will be acceptance this one year. But after that, if these Hawks start, start making the playoffs year in and year out like they used to, they better win the NBA title because, as you can see, I might look stunningly attractive and really handsome with the beard and, and my charisma and all. The fact is I'm getting old. And I want to be able to see my teams win championships before either I go blind or whatever, get glaucoma or my eyes fall out. I want to see it. I don't want to just hear it. I want to see it. 
because I'm one of those loyal fans who deserves to see their teams win championships. I have suffered long enough. But the Atlanta Hawks have come at a time now where, where I need it. You know, with this year has been horrible. Not only the coronavirus stopping a lot of things that I want to do, but the Falcons and their disastrous Chiefs season full of chokes. Georgia choking during the season today, playing some meaningless bowl game against Cincinnati that I hope they win, but I will not waste my energy watching. Or maybe I'll stream the game because I'm a diehard Georgia Bulldogs fan. What do you think? Um, and then the um, Atlanta Braves, that epic NLCS choke against the Dodgers and the baseball playoffs, the NLCS. Um, Calgary losing, Calgary Flames losing in the, uh, they won the playoff round against uh, Winnipeg, but then they lost and they choked a two games to one lead against the Dallas Stars. We're 11 seconds from up three to one and lost that series. I need a winner. I need something to take my mind off all the sports letdowns. And I believe the Atlanta Hawks are the medicine and the cure for what ails me. So the Atlanta Hawks are 2-0. and We beat the Bulls and the Grizzlies this week. We got the Detroit Pistons, our home opener on Monday. And then two games at the Brooklyn Nets on Wednesday and Friday. My next Atlanta Hawks stream will be uh, Saturday, next Saturday, uh, at home against the Cleveland Cavaliers. So I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully by that time, uh, I hopefully we can be 4-1. and one. Hopefully uh, we should be able to beat Detroit, but who knows. Uh, and then hopefully split with the Nets. So 4-1, and one, I would be okay with that. I don't know if I want to be 3-2 and two because then that means we probably let one of these games get away. But overall, it's great to be a Hawks fan. I'm glad. And I'm looking forward uh, to what this season is going to entail. So, everybody, thanks for watching this late premiere. I know it's late. Click the subscribe button. Road to 3K. Click the notification bell so you'll see when the content comes up. Uh, Share to all your media outlets around the world. And um, enjoy your time here. Subscribe. Like button. Dislike button if you wish. Notification bell. Share to your media outlets. This is going to be a great end to the 2020 sports season. Because you know what I'm going to do once the uh, Saints and the Bucks lose in the playoffs. Uh, and then turn the page to 2021. So, everybody, until tomorrow, for the uh, Kansas City Chiefs and the Atlanta Falcons, uh, hopefully A. Fizzle will be able to join me at around 12.55 p.m. Eastern Time. Kick off 1 o'clock from Kansas City. We are going to get molly whopped. But I'm going to be there. I love my team. I'm not bandwagon. And I'm going to ride them out to the very end, as I always do. So until then, this is the best Atlanta sports content creator on YouTube. The best representation content creator for the Atlanta Hawks, Atlanta Falcons, Atlanta Braves, Georgia Bulldogs, Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, Calgary Flames, Calgary Stampeders. I am the best. When you think of ATL, you think of sports life in ATL, your man, Slitter, and I will see you in the next one.